Ward Cameron here with the Mountain Nature and Culture podcast and we're here today to talk about black and grizzly bears and some of the important things that we need to know at this time of year in the central Canadian Rockies in order to play safe in bear country. The central Rockies are a difficult place to be a bear. There's not a lot of food here for them. If we were to compare this area to the north coast of British Columbia, the north coast is the land of milk and honey. You've got five kinds of Pacific salmon. You've got a dozen kinds of edible berries. There's all kinds of food for the bears. But in the central Rockies, this is about the most difficult place you can be a grizzly bear and still survive. Our bears have been up since early March. They've been active, they've been feeding, and they've still been losing weight. For bears to build their fat layers for winter, they need foods that are incredibly plentiful, highly nutritious, and easily digested, and there ain't no salmon for them here. In this area, those three characteristics come together in just one single plant, and it's a plant that I'm standing beside today. It's a plant called Canadian buffalo berry, or Shepherdia canadensis. This is the single most important food for black and grizzly bears in the central Rockies. Now that these berries are ripe, an adult grizzly bear can eat between 50,000 and 200,000 of these berries every single day. It's a mind-boggling amount of calories. It's the equivalent of you sitting down to a dinner of around 75 Big Macs every day for the next month. They can gain several pounds a day. They can gain almost a kilo or more every day simply from eating this highly nutritious, incredibly plentiful berry. There's a number of challenges though when it comes to bear safety when we talk about buffalo berry. Right now I'm standing beside a busy road and it's lined with a grizzly bear buffet. Most of our low elevation trails are lined with buffalo berry. Buffalo berry needs sunlight to grow. And to get sunlight, it needs an opening in the canopy. What by definition is a trail or a road, if not an opening in the canopy? So almost every one of our low elevation trails in this part of the Rockies is lined with a bear buffet. And here's the challenge. Because these things basically taste terrible, we don't eat them. And so it means that most of us also can't identify them. So we'll have people hiking, biking, jogging down our low elevation trails with no knowledge that they're traveling down a trail that is lined with a critical food for our bear population. When there are buffalo berries, there are bears. Now the buffalo berry, this particular plant is a pretty tall one. Usually they come up to about waist height on an adult human. The berries can be either red or orange in color. It's not a different species or one is not unripe. They're basically just two different varieties of the same plant. They either produce orange or red berries or no berries. Buffalo berry is one of these rare plants that have separated out the genders. So there are male plants and there are female plants and only the female plants are going to get berries. When it comes to bear safety and staying safe as you're playing in the mountains, we have to think of a few things. First, these berries are just about everywhere. Second, when the bears start feeding on buffalo berry, they actually go through a hormonal change called hyperphagia. It's a hormonal imperative to binge. Instead of the wary animal that we often associate them as, the bears at this time of year are zoned out. They are focused on nothing but feeding and getting the next group of berries into their mouth. 
So it means that not only do we have to be extra vigilant when we see this plant, but it also means we have to be vigilant for the bears as well. So this is a time of year where it's very easy to have unwanted close encounters. Mountain bikers need to be especially cautious at this time. This is not a time to go ripping along mountain trails if they're lined with this berry. We really need to be aware of what's growing around us for the next month or so. The berries only last until the first frost and then they fall off of the plant and the bears are going to move on to look for some of their other late fall foods. But for now, there's only one game in town and that's buffalo berry. Hikers and joggers, leave your iPod at home. We need to be aware of what's happening in our environment and having earbuds in means that you can't hear what's going on around you. We want to make sure that we are aware of where the bears may be. And finally, if you learn just one single plant in the whole Canadian Rockies, make it buffalo berry. Even better, learn to recognize buffalo berry at those times of year when there are no berries. And that way you know that if there's a buffalo berry bush in May, that at the end of July there's going to be buffalo berries. You can plan some of your walks specifically around avoiding some of these seasonal foods. This is a great time of year to do some of the high ridge walks because every self-respecting bear is heading down to the valleys to take advantage of this plentiful food supply. It doesn't mean you're not going to encounter a bear, but you can dramatically shift the odds into your favor by taking that into consideration. If you're an avid, avid hiker, mountain biker, jogger in the Rockies, take some time to learn some of the other seasonal foods that are important to bears. And I'll be doing some additional videos specifically to look at those at another time. But right now I thought it was important to get this important safety message out because the bears are out now. We've had numerous encounters already this year specifically focused around buffalo berries. And so we want to be aware and we want you to be safe. Make sure you have bear spray and that you know how to use it. Make sure the bear spray is on your body because a bear spray in your backpack or bear spray on your bike is of no use if you get separated. The most important thing is that we're out enjoying the mountains, that we're aware of our environment, that we understand the possibility of encountering bears in their natural habitat. But at this time of year, the odds go up dramatically. And as long as we're cautious, we're all going to have a lot more fun playing in the mountains. With that, I'm Ward Cameron with the Mountain Nature and Culture Podcast. We'll talk to you again. Have fun out there.